Hey everyone, Pastor Tom McMurtry back again with another video on assurance of salvation. And today we are going to look at one that's commonly used to kind of get people questioning their salvation. If uh, as a pastor, I want a proof text for this, I can use 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, 28, where it says, but let a man examine himself. Now that sounds pretty good. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So this looks like it could be a good verse to prove we need to get people checking up on their salvation. And you know, I don't believe we ought to be just constantly making people doubt their salvation and checking up on that. You know, as a Christian, we should be rejoicing in our salvation. But some would think, no, we need to do this pretty regular. And especially around the Lord's Supper, it's a time where we can have people check and make sure they're really saved. Make sure they're really uh, worthy of the Lord's Supper. Because uh, if they're taking it when they're not saved, well, then, I mean, they're eating and drinking damnation to themselves. And so, obviously, here, Paul is telling this church, you know, be checking up, making sure you are really saved. But is that what he is talking about? Now, I don't have, I'm not going to go through uh, the entire passage here, but it starts in 1 Corinthians 11, 17. I've got a message I've preached on this subject uh, that I'll leave a link in the description that will uh, go into a lot more detail on this. But this passage starts out, Paul is getting on to this church for how they have uh, participated in the Lord's Supper. It's not been good. They have not done this ordinance um, in an honorable way, in a way that, would please God. In fact, he knows God would be very upset with them on how they have done this. So he's not praising them for it. He talks about the divisions that are among them. So there must be heresies that are going on. And then he gets on to them for how they were doing it. You know, you've got one person that are getting getting full, another one's leaving hungry. Obviously, it's very obvious in this passage, people were coming and eating the Lord's Supper in a way that was just, uh, they were trying to satisfy their flesh. They were not doing it in remembrance of Christ. And he goes on to uh, give them the example of how Jesus, the same night when he was betrayed, how he took the bread and how he ate it of the cup and how he said, as, they, uh, as long as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. And we're supposed to do this and we're supposed to show the Lord's death till he come. And, and this ordinance of the Lord's Supper is one that we should continue to do it should be a tradition in a church, and it's a time where we come together and we remember the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. Because in the Old Testament, you know, they had a lot of holy sacrifices and a lot of holy rituals and things that they had to do, and there was a lot of detail that went into those things. And under the New Testament, we don't really have those things anymore, but you know what we do have is the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. That one sacrifice, that was it. it he finished it. And so just like they took the sacrifices and things very serious back in the Old Testament, whenever we're taking a time to remember the holy sacrifice of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we should have great reverence when it comes to that. I'm thankful that we don't have to go through all the rituals and things that they used to have to go through. I'm thankful Jesus, I mean, he took all those things out. He nailed them to the cross. Those things are done. I'm so thankful for that. But you got to understand those things were very sacred. They were very holy. They were very serious. And Jesus' body and blood replaced all of those things. So as a Christian today, when we take the time to remember that holy sacrifice, we should do it with great honor and great reverence. And I think that's a very important thing that Paul was trying to explain to a bunch of Gentile believers who probably weren't used to holy things. I mean, the Jewish believers probably would have understood this a little more than these Gentiles did, but they were kind of treating the Lord's Supper, it appears, like another one of their pagan feasts. And that was wrong, and it was shameful, and so Paul's getting on to him for it. And so he goes on in verse 27, after calling these things out, he says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And so 
preachers will use this verse and like, you know, you better be checking up on yourself. Are you really saved? Because you can't be taking the Lord's Supper if you're not saved. And if you haven't been baptized and if you're not a member of a church, and then they'll, to their definition, they'll throw their definition of what it means to be worthy in there. And, you know, in the closed communion crowd, they'll kind of use this as a proof text to prove you got to be saved, baptized, and do it as a member of your local church. But that's not what he's been describing in this passage. He's been talking about the lack of reverence that they've had for these things. They're not remembering the Lord. They're just, you know, pigging out and they're satisfying their flesh. That's not what this is for. We're remembering the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. And so some will say, well, you know, you're just making sure you're saved. But the problem is this eating and drinking damnation is something that was happening to saved people. And we often associate the word damnation with going to hell, but there can be, there's a spiritual damnation and there can be a physical damnation for a believer. And I'm telling you, he's talking to believers here. He is warning believers. He's warning saved people here in this passage. And I think great proof of that is for one, he hasn't talked about whether or not you're saved, but in verse 30, he says, for this cause of not eating and drinking unworthily, it says, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, when did Paul ever refer to lost people who were dead as being asleep? He says that about saved people. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Why does he call saved people who are dead asleep? Because they're dead, but they're going to rise again one of these days. So he often refers to dead, saved people as being asleep. So these people were dead Okay, because God killed them, I believe, for this. But they were still saved. And you say, oh, that seems kind of crazy. Well, Paul, earlier in the book, talked about delivering one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved. So this is consistent with what he's been teaching. This is saved people. Okay? The Lord's Supper is not about figuring out whether or not you're saved. That's not what he's, when he says, let a man examine yourself. He is not telling you to examine yourself to see if you're saved. It's to make sure you're eating and drinking worthily, meaning reverently, that you're remembering the Lord, that you're not doing it as a way to please the flesh. And then he goes on to say, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Why? Because we're separate from the world. And as a church, we should judge ourselves. And if we don't, God's going to deal with us. Okay? God is going to deal with us as a church. So he says, wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Now, why didn't he say, make sure you're saved? You know, make sure you're living a good life uh, and that you, you know, you don't, that you've gotten all the sin out of your life. Because some people, they'll do an altar call before the Lord's Supper so you can make sure you're all completely right with God. You know, don't be taking the Lord's Supper. You know, if you've been, if you've got sin in your life, but all of us have some sin in our life. And I thought we were remembering the blood of Christ. And doesn't that cover us and cleanse us from all of our sin? So what's he talking about here? He's again, talking about partaking of the Lord's supper reverently. And he says, if any man hunger, let him eat at home that he come not together into condemnation and the rest will I set in order. When I come, we do not take the Lord's supper to fill our be belly, to satisfy the flesh in any way. In our church, we often have potlucks where we fill our bellies, where we satisfy the flesh, where we eat a lot. When we have the Lord's Supper, that is not a meal that we should be looking forward to because we're hungry. And, we're, and you know, we shouldn't be looking forward to that bread because we just love the taste of it so much and drinking of that cup because we just love drinking that grape juice. No, that's not why we do it. We do it to remember the Lord. And so that's what he's been talking about. So really the only thing that it could possibly be that he's talking about when he's saying eating or drinking unworthily, it has to be something that he's dealt with somewhere in this letter. And in this passage, he's only been dealing with, you know, how they're taking the Lord's Supper. Are they doing it you know, worthily or unworthily? You know, or it could be a reference to something he said in chapter 5, where he says in verse 11, But I now have I written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard and extortioner with such a one know not to eat for what have I to do to judge them also that are without do not ye judge them that are within so here he's talking about eating now this could be just referring to Christian fellowship could be referring to the Lord's table 
But but he, cause we see too, he talks about them judging themselves. As a church, we should be judging. And if we know if somebody's living in open sin and they're doing any of these things, we should put them out of the church. And they definitely shouldn't be participating in the Lord's table with us. But then he goes on, uh, you know, so for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without, God judgeth judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So none, there's nothing in 1 Corinthians that tells us this is something that we do when to examine whether or not we are saved. And people are going to that verse, they're isolating it and telling you, check up on your salvation. We're going to have another altar call, you know, and go to the Lord altar and, you know, pray. And I said, Lord, am I really saved? Well, you know, we ought to have that nailed down by now. And I don't believe that's what the Lord's Supper is for. And I don't believe that's what that passage is about. I think it's about making sure we are eating and drinking the cup worthily. In other words, reverently, we're remembering the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. So don't let somebody come along and just use that verse, isolate it, and use it as a proof text to get you checking up on your salvation again. If you're a member of a church, you know, hopefully you've got that down by now. As a pastor, when people want to join our church, I always ask them their salvation testimony. And if they're professing faith in Christ and his works, then you know what? I That's my time to get them checking on their salvation. And if they've given a so- solid salvation testimony, we should rejoice in that. And I, we're not going to use the Lord's Supper as a time to get people doubting their salvation. It should be a time to get pe- to a uh, time to assure people of their salvation because you know what those sacrifices we bring they're not good enough. But boy, that one that our high priest, Jesus Christ, brought on our behalf, you better believe it's sufficient. You better believe because it was it was holy. It was perfect. The body of Jesus Christ was completely sinless. And you know what? Thank God for that. And if we're going to take a time to remember that holy sacrifice, we should do it with great honor and great reverence and to just make it about Filling our bellies and pleasing our flesh is a very wicked thing to do. And I don't believe God's pleased with it at all. And so uh, if you want to know more on this, I'll I'll leave a link to the sermon I preached on the subject. And hopefully it will be a help to you. But uh, thank God for salvation and the assurance of salvation. So I hope this was a help. Thank you for watching.